to our channel now we are going to discuss what are the muscles of posterior compartment of the thigh so mainly the back of the thigh contains the hamstring muscles as you can see here the semi tendinosus semi membranosus biceps femoris and also the uh, adductor magnus uh, how part of the adductor magnus also especially is ischial part of adductor magnus also take part in this uh, posterior compartment of thigh muscles so they are also called as hamstring muscles these muscles arise in the gluteal region and course through the back of the thigh and they get inserted into the popliteal fossa over here right so this posterior compartment of the thigh muscles are supplied by the sciatic nerve and all these muscles including part of composite or hybrid muscle that is our adductor magnus you know already adductor magnus is a composite or uh, hybrid muscle why because it is present both in adductor or medial compartment and also in the posterior compartment hence it is supplied by two nerves that is the obturator nerve especially the posterior division of obturator nerve and also it is supplied by the sciatic nerve that is a posterior uh, nerve of the thigh so the artery which is accompanying or running in sciatic nerve represents the part of the axial artery of lower limb so if you remember like uh, axial artery in upper limb so we say the sciatic nerve the artery which is running along with it is also called as axial artery of lower limb so actually this posterior compartment of thigh is also called flexor compartment if you remember the anterior compartment of the thigh are called extensor compartment these are called flexor compartment it is incompletely separated from the medial compartment may be poorly defined posterior intermuscular septum okay and the adductor magnus is component of both of these components yes so coming to cutaneous innervation the skin over the back of thigh is mainly supplied by branches from posterior cutaneous nerve of the thigh okay so coming to the muscles of the back of thigh so what are the muscles what is this origin insertion nerve supply action how to test them clinical anatomy everything we are going to cover in this video so mainly the muscles of back of thigh are called hamstring muscles these are semi tendinosus semi membranosus the long head of biceps femoris and also ischial head of adductor magnus muscle okay so the hamstrings are having the characters like the origin they are having a common origin and common insertion they're like between the hip you can see hip and the knee joint so their common origin is from ischial tuberosity of the hip bone and they are commonly inserted into the bones of the legs like either femur mainly their insertion is on the three bones remember the three bones one is a femur one is a tibia one is a fibula okay so if you know fibula is present on the lateral aspect of your uh, uh, leg right and you know the femur is in the thigh right and also the tibia tibia is a medial component of the leg so to these three muscles it will have its insertion so coming to adductor magnus it reaches only up to the adductor tubercle of the femoris so actually this adductor magnus insert into the adductor tubercle of the femur but it is included among hamstring muscles because the tibial collateral ligament of knee joint is morphologically degenerated tendon of this muscle so if you know that tibial collateral ligament it's actually the degenerated part of only this adductor magnus muscle okay so the nerve supply from the tibial part of sciatic nerve uh, it's mainly supplied by tibial part of sciatic nerve and the muscle here act as flexors of the knee joint and extensors of the hip so they will flex the knee means you know the flexion for example in my hand i show so this is flexion if i do this is extension if i do like this this is flexion so they do flexion of this leg but that is the knee joint but they do extension of the hip extension is like this only just like this so knee will get uh, extended like this but the you know the leg will get flexed like this so that is the function of our this hamstring muscles in this diagram mainly there are three muscles semi tendinosus semi membranosus biceps femoris the three muscles are mainly called as the chief flexors of the knee actually they are the weak extensors of the hip particularly in walking so this is important in mid flex position of hip and remember that the powerful extension of hip is mainly performed by gluteus maximus you know the muscle of gluteal region right when the knee is in semi flex position the biceps femoris muscle is lateral rotator of the leg while the semi membranosus semi tendinosus are 
medial rotators so if you see this is a medial side this is a lateral side so they are medial rotators there is a semi membranous semi tendinous but biceps femoris you can see it's on lateral side so it is a lateral rotator like that you can remember this coming to when the hip when the hip is extended the biceps femoris is a lateral rotator of the leg while semi tendinous is membranous is medial rotator so already discuss so actually this diagram if you see this is showing the testing of the hamstring muscle so we can test the hamstring muscle by flexing the knee uh, against the resistance and palpating the contracting muscles over here so that then you can easily palpate your hamstring muscles so let us start the attachment origin everything so for that you can see this diagram okay so coming to the semi tendinous is first it is named because it is having a long tendon of insertion and lies posterior medially in the thigh it is superficial to the semi membranous so the semi tendinous origin is mainly from the inferior medial impression on upper part of ischial tuberosity so inferior medially it will get its uh, origin on the upper part of ischial tuberosity in common with long head of biceps femoris so from there it will come and it will insert into the upper part of medial surface of tibia behind the sartorius and gracilis so here it will get its insertion so this is of course supplied by the sciatic nerve and its root value is l5 s1 s2 okay next coming to the semi membranosis you can see here this one is semi membranosis okay so it is getting its uh, actually it is named because it is a flat tendon of origin it lies posterior medially in thigh deep to the semi tendinosus so it is arising from the superior lateral uh, impression on upper part of ischial tuberosity okay so that is coming from inferior medial this is coming from superior lateral okay so the expansions from tendon form oblique popliteal ligament and fascia covering the popliteus so their insertion into the groove of on the posterior surface of medial condyle of tibia so it is attaching to the posterior surface of medial condyle of tibia even the semi tendinosus is attaching on the medial surface so remember it is attaching on medial surface of tibia but the semi membranosus is attaching on medial surface uh, that is the medial condyle of tibia okay so membranosus on condyle tendinosus on surface medial surface of tibia both are attaching to the tibia itself and of course this is also supplied by the sciatic nerve tibial part now coming to the biceps femoris the biceps femoris is having two heads of origin long and short it lies posterior lateral in the thigh so the long head mainly take its origin from the inferior medial impression on upper part of ischial tuberosity same like our uh, semi tendinosus okay on the upper part of ischial tuberosity common with semi tendinosus and also from lower part of sacro tuberous ligament and the short head of biceps brachii gets its insert, uh, origin from lateral lip of linea aspera between the adductor magnus and vastus lateralis from upper two thirds of lateral supracondylar line so for that we should see in the diagram so you can see here the origin of short head of biceps brachii it is getting its origin from lateral lip of linea aspera between adductor magnus and vastus lateralis from the upper two thirds of lateral supracondylar line here right and from the lateral intermuscular septum so both of the short head and long head finally they get inserted into the uh, folded around split by fibula collateral ligament inserted into head of fibula in front of sagittal process so here you know this is the tibia side this is fibula so they get inserted into the fibula in front of apex of styloid process so of course they are supplied by especially the long head is supplied by tibial part of sciatic nerve whereas the short head is supplied by common peroneal part of sciatic nerve okay of course both are sciatic nerve but the long head is by tibial part short head is by common peroneal part of sciatic nerve so this is about different uh, muscles of the posterior compartment their origin insertion and also their uh, now supply action let us see another diagram once again to you know conclude this topic so you can see here this is a ischial tuberosity this is a femur right so actually the semi tendinous is coming uh, first we need to divide this into medial and lateral side right so let us divide it 
दिस इज मीडियल साइड ऑफ फिश के डिब्रोसिटी इज द लेटरल साइड ओके जस्ट ड्रॉ ए डॉटेड लाइन इज अ सुपीरियर साइड इज इज इंफीरियर साइड राइट सो फ्रॉम सुपीरियर मीडियल साइड यू गेट ऑरिजिन ऑफ सेमीटेनियोनियोसिस एंड लॉन्ग एड ऑफ बाइसेप्स फीमरिस एंड दिस इज अ सुपीरियर लैटरल पार्ट सो फ्रॉम सुपीरियर लैटरल पार्ट यू गेट ऑरिजिन ऑफ सेमी मेम्बेनियस ओके ऑफ इश कैल्टी प्रोसिड एंड फ्रॉम इनफीरियर मीडियल पार्ट देर इज सब किडनीस एरिया ओके एंड इनफीरियर लैटरल पार्ट देर इज ऑरिजिन ऑफ एडक्टेड माइंडस ओके सो जस्ट ड्रॉ अ लाइन डिवाइड इन टू सुपीरियर इनफीरियर मीडियल लेटरल यू कैन इजिली फाइंड आउट द ऑरिजिन and of course we already discuss the origin of short head of biceps femoris which is coming from uh, lateral lip of linea aspera and it is continuing up to the lateral supracondylar line so by this we completed this muscles of back of thigh next we will start the discussion on sciatic nerve